So on this Monday, we thought we'd let our viewers know the state of the race on the Republican nomination right now and where it stands as of Saturday night. OK, so about not quite six weeks ago, we were in a frozen tundra of Iowa. OK, I just want to take you back there and, share, and just remind us what the results were. Trump got a tick over 50 percent. Uh, Nikki Haley won a singular county that night, Johnson County, by a singular vote there in Iowa uh, some six weeks ago. Uh, then we moved to New Hampshire. I'll call this up for you right here. Ten different counties and Trump was dominant yet again, well over 50 percent. And this was the one county that Nikki Haley won. That is Grafton County. Uh, and she won that quite handily. Uh, reasonably speaking, when you talk about a race that is competitive. Then we went out to Nevada. Nevada has been a mess, right, between the caucuses and the primaries. Uh, well, the caucus is the only one that mattered when it came to delegates. And Trump swept all 17 counties and won the entire state. So then we went rolling into South Carolina on Saturday night. We were trying to figure out, well, can Nikki Haley do well in her home state? We want to show you <clears throat> among candidates in time, if we were to go back eight years, right? A lot of candidates there battling it out. This was eight years ago in Texas. Ted Cruz won his home state by 17 points over Donald Trump. I mean, it wasn't much of a contest. Eight years ago, right, John Kasich in Ohio beat Donald Trump and won his home state by 11 points. All right, but on Saturday night, after spending really close to about $15 million, uh, Donald Trump was a 20-point victor over Nikki Haley. She did win three counties, and, uh, but that was it. After $14, $15 million spent. Former Speaker of the House Kevin Carthy with me now. Sir, good morning to you. Um, ni ni nice to have you on. We, we had a lot of top time to gab on Saturday night. And there seemed to be this question as to what, what, what does Nikki Haley do next? You know, I, we know she's competing in Michigan tomorrow. But there was some talk as to whether or not she would be a third party nominee or a candidate. Grady Trimble caught up with her last night in Michigan. I don't know how more clear I can make that I don't want vice president. I have said multiple times I'm not, I am a Republican. I am not running as any other party or independent. And I will continue to say this is not about my political career. This is about the future of America. Will this you is about ever run, will you ever run as a third party candidate? I've though? said no over and over again. I have no interest in a third party candidacy. So then I ask you, I, I just showed you the numbers. What's the strategy or how does this thing wind down? I don't think Nikki Haley runs as a third party candidate. She is a Republican. The one thing you do know after this Saturday election that the race is over. This is going to be between President Trump and President Biden. And I think the sooner we focus on that, unify this party, I think you see all those movements happening right now. With President Trump lays out a rebuild, restore, and renew, I think he's going to have a very strong election uh, <laughs> coming in November. I think this is going to be a report card on what President Biden promised coming into office and actually what he did. The Democrats don't quite realize the damage they have done to this border, and it, if it goes across the nation and people frustrated, the economy, uh, where our standing is, and the foreign policy around the world. I think people remember what it was four years ago, the price of gas, their economy, and the safety and security they had around the world. All right, I think it's going to be a big night for Republicans. Got it. Michigan's tomorrow night, then uh, eight days in Super Tuesday. Ronna McDaniel is in the news. Uh, she's going to step down on the 8th of March at the convention in Houston. What do you make of the change in the RNC? And what, listen, you traveled the country recruiting candidates, trying to win races. What is critical about this now? Well, I, I want to thank Ronna for her service. President Trump would have never won the presidency except for her work in, in Michigan there as well. And I worked with her strongly on winning the majority in the House. I think this is a smart move on her part. I like who the president is supporting to come in Watley. I know him. I know his abilities. I, I like Laura being able to come in as well. I think this is retooling, rebuilding, and beginning that election that we're going to have in November and beginning what we need right now in resources. I like what I'm seeing. Um, I want to see more unity within the party. They've got to remember, this is about addition, not subtraction. We can get every Republican to vote for us, but we will not win. We need to reach out and have more people join with us, from independents and Democrats, that want to really look at the America they want to see going forward for themselves and their children. You called Ronna a dear friend and a strong leader of the RNC. When you mentioned Laura, that's Laura Trump. And she, on Saturday at CPAC, was touting the value of early voting for Republicans. 
And that, that you know, I mean, that, that, that's a sticky spot right now with a lot of Republicans thinking you have to do it on Election Day. But listen, the rules for voting in America have changed in 2024. And we're going to see how that plays out. I want to hit you on one more thing. These were the issues in South Carolina. I brought this up with M.K. Ham a short time ago. Immigration at 44 percent. Economy and jobs at 30 percent. Look at immigration at 44 percent. And it wasn't just in South Carolina. It was in Iowa. It was in New Hampshire. And remember, there is no new legislation that passed except a new president. This all lays at the feet of the Democrats. The House actually passed, when I was speaker, the strongest border security bill we can have. And look what just transpired in Georgia. A young woman is actually killed on an individual who illegally came here from Venezuela, was picked up, um, and then didn't show up again. We have watched these stories, horrific stories, throughout our nation time and again. And this all lays at the feet of the Democrats and President Biden. And I think uh, this is going to be a very big issue throughout the campaign all the way to November. Eight years ago, I don't mean to keep going back there, but that's the only basis <laughs> comparison we have for this a nomination fight here. Immigration was at 10% in South Carolina, and you see where it is yes. now. Sir, thanks for coming on. Nice to see you, Kevin McCarthy. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.